Hello and welcome to this video on the scapula anastomosis. We will begin by analyzing the four questions what, where, why and how. So first, what is the scapula anastomosis? It's a circulatory anastomosis and it's formed between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery which will be discussed in detail. Where? Now the scapular anastomosis lies around the body of scapula and also over the acromion process. Now why is it present? What does it do? So it provides collateral blood flow like any others, any other anastomosis. So in case of an occlusion or damage to any of the vessels, it will maintain the blood flow in the scapula region. Now how is it formed? So as I mentioned before, it's formed between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery. Now this is the heart, this is the aorta. From the aorta we have three major vessels, the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid and the left subclavian. So this is the aorta. And from the aorta, we have the brachiocephalic trunk. Now this brachiocephalic trunk divides into the right common carotid and a right subclavian. The right subclavian, after the lateral border of the first rib, becomes the axillary artery. So the subclavian artery, after the lateral border of the first rib, it becomes the axillary artery. Now the subclavian part artery is divided into three parts by the muscle scalenus anterior. Now the first, second and third part give out branches and the first part gives out the vertebral artery, the internal thoracic artery and the thyrocervical trunk. The second part gives out the costocervical part and third part in some books, the dorsal scapula is considered to be arising from the thyrocervical trunk itself. So, it can be remembered as vitamin C and D. Now, the axillary artery, it's divided into three parts by the pectoralis minor. So, the first part gives out one branch, second gives out two branches, third gives out three branches. The first part gives out a superior thoracic artery, the second gives rise to thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic. The third part gives rise to anterior circumflex humeral, posterior circumflex humeral and the subscapular artery. And the axillary artery becomes the brachial artery after the inferior margin of the teres major. Now we saw before that the first part of the subclavian and the third part of the axillary artery form the scapular anastomosis. So, so when we say the first part of the subclavian, we are referring to the branches vitamin VIT, so vertebral, internal thoracic and thyrocervical trunk. Those are the ones that we are going to focus on. And when we say the third part of the axillary artery, that's the circumflex humeral vessels, humeral arteries and the subscapular artery. So I am going to use purple for the subclavian. and orange for the axillary artery. So here we have the clavicle, the first strip, the sternum, the scapula and the humerus. Now please don't look for accuracy in this diagram. It is absolutely a rough diagram just to show you how the vessels travel and how the anastomosis is formed. So first we have the subclavian artery and after the lateral border of the first strip it's the axillary artery. So when we talk about the first part of the subclavian artery means VIT that is vertebral, internal thoracic and thyrocervical trunk. So first we have our vertebral artery we have an internal thoracic and we also have a thyrocervical trunk. Now the thyrocervical trunk 
gives rise to an inferior thyroid a transverse cervical and a suprascapular artery and we are going to be focusing on the thyrocervical trunk so we have a thyrocervical trunk this is the inferior thyroid this here is the transverse cervical this is the suprascapular artery Now this transverse cervical continues, it forms a superficial cervical artery and another which is called the dorsal scapular. Next let's quickly go through this again we have the vitamin VIT vertebral internal thoracic and thyrocervical trunk the thyrocervical trunk divides into the inferior thyroid transverse cervical and suprascapular the transverse cervical in turn divides into superficial cervical and a dorsal scapular artery now our vessels of concern here are the dorsal scapular and the suprascapular Let's just leave it there and we'll come back to it again after we finish discussing the third part of the axillary artery. Now coming to the axillary artery, I mentioned before that the axillary artery is divided into three parts by the pectoralis minor. So this is the pectoralis minor. So this would be the first part of the axillary artery because it's before the pectoralis minor. The second part of the axillary artery is under the pectoralis minor beneath the pectoralis minor the third part is what lies after this that is lateral to it so in the third part we learned three branches of the third part one is the anterior circumflex humeral another is the posterior circumflex humeral and the other one is the subscapular artery So these are the circumflex humeral vessels and this is the subscapular. Now going back to the subclavian. So we saw that the dorsal scapula and the suprascapular are the vessels of importance here. So we'll start with the suprascapula. So the suprascapula travels here. here. Comes here. It goes behind the coracoid and the acromion process. So it goes to the posterior aspect of the scapula. We'll see more about it when we see the posterior surface. Now the dorsal scapular on the other hand travels beneath these, comes over here and travels here. It gives out branches over here. It also sends branches posteriorly, so I'll just dot those. Right. So this I'll just make it clear, the suprascapula travels here and goes behind to the posterior aspect. The dorsal scapula comes here to the side and gives out branches to the scapula, to the middle border of the scapula. So that is the first part of the subclavian. Now the third part of the axillary artery, that's the subscapular artery. Subscapula comes here 
metanostomosis here with the dorsal scapular this is the dorsal scapular artery so these two anastomos here and this also gives our branches now the subscapular also gives out a branch called the circumflex subscapular so the circumflex subscapular artery goes behind goes to the posterior aspect this would be the circumflex scapular, subscapular artery so we'll see these arteries which travel to the posterior aspect in the next image so this is the anterior aspect moving on to the posterior again this is the scapula this is the clavicle and this is the humerus so let's draw here again so now we're just going to imagine this from the posterior aspect now remember we have a thyrocervical trunk which gave out an inferior thyroid transverse cervical and suprascapular arteries the transverse cervical divided into superficial cervical and a dorsal scapular and here we have the suprascapular the suprascapular traveled behind the dorsal scapular on the other hand came and started supplying the medial side now we're going to see about the suprascapular so i'm not going to draw the in entire thyrocervical trunk i'll just draw this so the suprascapular comes here and gives out branches this is the suprascapular and we saw above we have the subscapular which gives out the circumflex subscapular artery which goes behind the scapula so from here this would be the subscapular artery this vessel this artery right here this is the subscapular artery this has given out the circumflex subscapular artery now this goes in from the anastomosis here with other vessels and we can also draw the dorsal scapula so we had the dorsal scapula on the medial side the subscapula on the lateral side so on the medial side we'll also have dorsal scapula so this would be somewhere here this will also anastomose here and it will anastomose anteriorly as well so we have this from the suprascapular these are coming from the circumflex scapular sorry circumflex subscapular and this here is the dorsal scapular So this is your scapular anastomosis. We have a subclavian artery. The first part of the subclavian is involved and the axillary artery, the third part of the axillary artery is involved. The major vessels involved are the dorsal scapula, the suprascapula and from here we have the subscapula. So that was all about the scapular anastomosis. I'm attaching a picture, a clearer picture of the scapular anastomosis so that you can take a look at it if you have any more doubts. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, please do like and leave more comments about what I can do to improve the quality of the videos. Thank you.